HTC partnered with Intel and DisplayLink to make their Vive headsets wireless via an add-on adapter. Getting high fidelity VR to run wirelessly is difficult, considering you need a lot of bandwidth and throughput to stream to high resolution VR headsets. On top of that, you would need to output a super low latency signal, lest you run the risk of causing judder, which can make people motion sick. The wireless adapter works with either the Vive or the Vive Pro, and at E3, I tried it running on the latter with its very high 2880 by 1600 resolution display, and didn't notice any latency or much compression. I also had a chance to sit down with HTC Vive director Troy Edwards and DisplayLink director Andy Davis, where they broke down how the wireless adapter works. We've been working with Vive for a while. Um, we bring a technology which is unique because basically what we have is a dynamic compression capability for graphics. When you're running in a wireless environment, it's very, very difficult to maintain an exact bandwidth at all time. The beauty, what you really want to get to is with uh, VR, is to a level of immersion that enables you to really move around and, and be fully immersed and, and not have to think about a cable or anything else. So to do that, it's actually quite difficult because as you move, bandwidth's constantly changing. So what you'll see with the Vive wireless adapter is it actually has two antennas on the side there. And that's, that's really to get you the very best reception as you move around. But as you move around and that bandwidth changes, display compression is changing on the fly at the same time. And what we want to do is to ensure that to the end user, you never notice that at all. To you, it's absolutely invisible. You just get the very best experience possible through the Vive or the Vive Pro. You can enjoy it and be totally immersed and not have to worry. In the past, if you wanted to make a VR headset wireless, you generally either had to make a trade-off between latency or compression. When I tried an earlier build at CES, I didn't notice much latency, but I did notice a lot of compression, which, thankfully, got greatly reduced with the E3 build that I tried. I asked if it was difficult to manage the balancing act between compression and latency. From a compression perspective, we're not like, you know, a lot of people think compression is like a light switch. You turn it on or you turn it off and it's just one level of compression. We're not like that at all. So with, with DisplayLink, what we've done is we've built a proprietary compression solution from the ground up. We actually have a big background outside of VR, which is more in productivity and enterprise. So, you know, the, the background of us is we put together multiple display solutions for enterprise customers like finance and banking and corporate trading solutions. So for us to put together, you know, a wall of eight displays for a trader and they're all 4K okay and you run it over a single USB is, is not unusual. Um, so then when we bring that into VR, logically we can take that same very proven compression solution that's already been deployed by corporate, tweak it a little bit for VR, and then work with the radio to ensure that as we get radio data to, in, to understand how that bandwidth changes, our algorithms will just naturally kick in. Now from a latency perspective, we will operate really where you know, if you can see one or two frame drops, you tend, your, your brain tends not to notice it. Beyond that, you, you will notice there's an issue. So we ensure that you never get to that level. We will adjust. We have lots of areas we can tweak and tune. It's invisible to the user. Um, and you won't see any noticeable latency. Most people that have tried here at the show have said to us it's comparable to a wire. Some of you might be wondering when the adapter might release and how much it would cost. So I cut to the chase and asked them. Yeah, so on price and release date, uh, we'll have it, we'll be announcing that in the next couple of months. Uh, we're targeting toward end of summer for the for the release of the product. I think from the Vive perspective, for us it's really important because from day one we started, we kept improving Vive. So we made the original headset lighter. We made the three-in-one cable uh, improve the performance on that. And then so with Vive Pro, we added resolution. The last hurdle for us really right now is wireless. And so it's, we're really excited to be working here with DisplayLink um, and Intel as well to bring this to market. Considering the Vive isn't the most convenient thing to set up, I asked what the process for setting up the wireless adapter entailed. So it's really easy in actual fact. What you do is you take a standard VR spec PC, open up the PC and there's a single PCI Express card that throws in there. Off the back of that, we have a, an antenna cable. That antenna cable gives you lots of flexibility. So two meters high, you can mount an antenna on the wall. So what you'll see actually in the booth here is quite, quite high up, we have an antenna sticking out. It's very small, actually looks almost not, you know, not too dissimilar from a little, uh, a little uh, camera system. 
Well, in fact, it's a very, very simple setup. It's a setup here, in actual fact, adding the, the PCIe card and adding this session on the wall took around about 10 minutes. So very, very easy. And not only could you mount it on the wall, you could mount it on the stand as well, which gives you the ability to move in between rooms if you really wanted to. On the Vive Pro then, we're running the Vive Pros here, but on the Vive Pro or the Vive, it's a very simple addition. So you take out the cable set that plugs into the headset, add in a new cable set that goes into the back of the Vive Pro wireless adapter, the Vive Pro the Vive wireless adapter. And it's as simple as just strapping it onto the headset. So literally, putting it on the Vive Pro, I did three of them here the other day, it took me about a minute and a half each. So it's very, very simple. So software-wise, you don't have to do anything, you just plug and play kind of thing? Yeah. yeah. So software, there's a little plugin that goes onto the PC, which is enabling you to have the, the plugin for the wireless connection. So it's, it's a little similar to when you want to connect on an SSID for, for a Wi-Fi. This is Y gigs, we're running in the 60 gig spectrum, but very similar process. So you look for this in the connection mode, you simply say connect, and it connects up with the headset. Very, very simple. And for users today, it works with both the Vive and the Vive Pro. So let's say you have a Vive today, you aspire to upgrade to Vive Pro later, you go ahead and buy wireless. It's as easy as flipping it around back and forth and just changing the cables out. So the same accessory works with both headsets. The Vive headset is tracked via two lighthouse sensors. But considering only one sensor is used to track the wireless adapter, I asked if occlusion or sensor line of sight issues might occur. No issues at all. We've had people here covering them up and getting into strange positions on the floor. No one's managed to find any areas where you could include this so far. My initial impressions of the wireless adapter indicate that the device is doing a good job mitigating latency and compression. But I had to ask how long the 10,000 milliamp battery would last. Um, so what we've been seeing at the show is between two and three hours. I think you guys say two. Yep. So we're looking at right now the way it works is it comes it works with a standard HTC charge pack that we sell for our mobile phones today. So if you have an HTC phone and then you buy the Vive wireless adapter, you'll get one of those charge packs and it'll work for both. It's spec to about two to three hours and charge time is roughly an hour. A lot of people run their Vive on gaming laptops or mini ITX PCs that don't have an extra PCIe slot. Those users won't be able to use the wireless adapter in its current state. So I asked the two if they were working on solutions to overcome this issue. Sure, it's something we're looking at. Uh, we wanted to get it to market as quickly as we could, and so the fastest way to do that was via the desktop slot. Uh, but we know there's people that have uh, MSI Lots apps or otherwise that are driving uh, VR from that. So we're looking at it and trying to find a solution. Finally, with the Vive wireless adapter shaping up to be a promising product, I had to ask HTC if a next-gen Vive might include wireless support out of the box. For Vive, I think we're going to make it an up, we're going to keep it as an upgrade option, so that you can get into Vive at a very affordable price point today. And then this will be an additional accessory that you can add on at any point in your purchase path. Um, the category of standalone headsets is growing. We have the Vive Focus in China today, um, and we'll see that come to the U.S. later this year as well. Um, but for Vive and premium PC-based VR, oh, we'll keep it separate for now. I want to thank Troy and Andy for this interview, and for all my superstar patrons who helped make this crowdfunded video possible. If you want to see more VR Insider interviews like this, please consider contributing to the Patreon for early access videos, exclusive content, written articles, and more. Thanks.